Howdy, I'm Baron Stone from San Antonio, Texas. I want to explain to you the concept of event-driven programming and describe how it relates to Python for the Rice University Coursera course on interactive programming. Now before I describe event-driven programming, I want to give you an appreciation for why it's so useful and why it's Dr. Rixner's favorite programming model. And to do that, I'm going to describe another method of programming called polling. Now in polling, you write a computer program that is continuously checking and checking and checking and actively checking for a certain status to occur. For example, a button to be pressed. And when it sees that that status has occurred, it then performs an appropriate action. Today is a lazy Sunday afternoon, and I'm waiting for my good friend Olivia to come over. Now, in this scenario, Olivia is going to arrive on my front porch, representing a status, at which time I need to perform the appropriate action, which is to do the nice thing and let her in the house. So how will I know when she's on the front porch? Well, let's try the polling approach. Now to do that, I have to get up off my couch. Then I go down the stairs. I check to see if she's here. Not yet. So I head back up the stairs. And I sit back down on my couch. But as soon as I sit back down, I gotta get back right up again to check and see if she's here. I go down the stairs again. Nope, still not here. Back up the stairs I go. Sit down, stand up. Down the stairs another time. Not yet. Up again. Down, up. Down again. Nope. And back up the stairs again. Whew, that's exhausting. As you can see, polling is not a very efficient method. It takes a lot of energy for me to run up and down these stairs to constantly check for a status that's rarely occurring. It also prevents me from doing anything else fun on my Sunday afternoon. A computer application that implements a polling routine uses a lot of cycles checking for that rarely occurring status. Now in the case of a low-level software-driven I.O. type application, that may be perfectly acceptable. But in these high-level user interface type applications that we're going to be writing in Python, using a polling routine would just be wasteful. And that is why we use event-driven programming. As an event-driven program, I can just sit here on my couch, watching my Sunday football, waiting for an event to occur. And when that event occurs, it'll interrupt my waiting state, and only then will I have to get off the couch to handle that event with the appropriate action. There are a lot of different types of events that I'm prepared to handle. One example is a timer event. Now, Olivia called me before she left to come over here and said that she should arrive in about 30 minutes. So I set a timer for 45 minutes. If I haven't heard from her in that time, then I should probably give her a call to make sure her car didn't break down on the way. <clears throat> now that that timer event has interrupted my <clears throat> waiting state, I should handle it like I said I would for giving Olivia a call. Hey, how's it going? Oh, oh, ooh. sorry to hear that. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye. Stuck in traffic. Well, now that I'm done handling the timer event, I can return back to my waiting state. <sighs> In addition to timers, I can also respond to user-generated events like a button press. Ah, the doorbell. That must be Olivia. Well, let me go handle that event by being nice and letting her in. So then I go down the stairs, but only once this time. And now I can let Olivia in. Oh, I hear my phone ringing upstairs. Now normally I'd answer my phone right away, but I'm in the middle of handling this doorbell ringing event by letting Olivia in. As an event-driven program, I can only handle one event at a time, and I'll do so in the order that those events occur. That means it's very important that I don't take too long answering this door here, because there's somebody on the other end of that phone waiting for me to answer it as well. So without further ado... Hey Olivia, come on in. I gotta answer the phone upstairs. And now that I've finished handling the doorbell event by letting Olivia in, I can handle this phone ringing event by answering it. 
Hey David, what's up? And that's event-driven programming. Now that we've looked at a admittedly silly example of real-world event handling, let's look at a Python representation of code handling those same events. I call this program Lazy Sunday, a brief study in handling life events. You can see we start out by importing our simple GUI module, as well as this module called time. Uh, we won't go into what that does, but it gets used by one of the helper functions. And we also, you can see, declare a helper function that as the description says, it waits for four seconds. And that helper function is called fiddling around. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but we won't go into what actually happens inside that function. After that, we define three handler functions for the three events we saw in our scenario. One being a timer, one being the doorbell ringing, and one being the phone ringing. So for the timer handler, when my timer goes off, as you saw in that earlier video, uh, that's time for me to give Olivia a call and see if she's in a wreck or what's going on with her car. Uh, the handler after that is for the doorbell. So if the doorbell rings, I need to go downstairs and open it. And then the last handler is for if my phone rings, I need to pick it up and answer it. As you can see, I very simply just print the action I'm going to execute for each of those handlers. And then down at the bottom of the code, we actually have to create the frame and then assign callbacks uh, to those different handlers. Uh, so the first part is we create a timer. You can see here that we create a timer that's going to produce an event every three seconds. And we assign that timer to call back to that timer function that we defined up here. So every three seconds, this timer is going to trigger an event. It's going to ring and it's going to tell my timer function to print out calling Olivia. We also down here, we create a frame using the simple GUI module titled Lazy Sunday. And in that frame, we add two buttons, one that's called ring doorbell. And you can see here it calls the doorbell uh, function for its callback. And then down here, we have one for a button that's titled call phone. And you can see it uses the phone call function to handle that event. So when we click one of these buttons, they will call the appropriate function. And of course, down at the bottom of the code, we need to start that timer and start that frame with those buttons. So those buttons are uh, active to uh, administer their callbacks. So let's run the code. And as we expect, I call Olivia after three seconds. And oh, I call her again after three more seconds and three more seconds after that. So this timer keeps running in the background and every three seconds it's generating an event which is calling that timer handler which is printing out calling Olivia. Now if I called Olivia every three seconds I'd be a pretty annoying friend and she'd probably never talk to me again. So for now let's just comment out that piece of code so we don't actually start that timer and run our program again. And now you can see without that timer running even though we have that handler event, the timer handler defined, it's never getting called because that event's never occurring. So we're never actually producing a timer event. Now the only two events I have available are the ring doorbell and call phone event. And so if I click on ring doorbell, you can see as expected, I answer the door. And if I click on call phone, you can see as expected, I answer the phone. And you notice that those are both very immediate reactions. So if I ring my doorbell over and over, as fast as I can click that doorbell, I'm able to answer it. And similarly, as fast as I can call that phone, I'm able to answer that. But it's a lazy Sunday, and uh, I'm not always immediate on the response. So let's say when the doorbell rings, I'm in the middle of watching a football game, and I want to wait until the end of the play. So let me call my function here, fiddle around, which as we see by the description up here, that'll wait for four seconds. So now what's going to happen is if I call the doorbell, and let me just demonstrate that, it's going to take four seconds before that doorbell is able to get past that filling around uh, function and print out the opening door. So I'm sitting there waiting for the end of my football play to occur. Now, if doorbell is the only thing that's happening, yes, it's kind of annoying to the person downstairs that they have to wait a little while, but it's not the end of the world. But what happens if after the doorbell rings, I immediately receive a phone call from someone. This is the scenario we saw in the video just a moment ago. So let me demonstrate that. If I ring the doorbell and then immediately receive a phone call, you notice that phone call wasn't answered until after I open the door. Let me do that one more time. I'll ring the doorbell 
and while the doorbell is being waited on, I place a phone call. And that comes in after the doorbell ringing. This is because Python can only handle one event at a time, and it does so in the order that those events occur. So when the doorbell occurs, the program is in the process of running that doorbell handler. And when the phone call event occurs, it gets placed into the event queue and is ready to be handled as soon as that doorbell event uh, concludes, or the handler for that doorbell event concludes. And I can place multiple calls to the phone into that handler queue. So for example, if I ring the doorbell and then I place five calls really fast, you'll notice that after, whoops, after the uh, doorbell is finished handling, then I go and handle those five calls. So this would be motivation to you when you're doing user interfaces with event-driven programming, you want to ensure that your handler functions run in a very short amount of time. If they take a long time to respond, then you might be missing other actions or delaying other actions from being handled, and that can create a slow and clunky user interface. I hope you found this video useful in understanding the concepts of polling and event-driven programming, and why event-driven programming is so great. I also hope it helped emphasize the importance of keeping your event handlers short so you don't hold up the rest of your program and prevent it from handling other events. Thanks for watching and happy programming.